Greetings all, this is Harry Nick back once again at my desk in front of the computer to talk about this new article about the resistance transport for Wave 4 of X-Wing 2nd Edition. Now, I know we've already seen all of these things before, but the video we did revealing everything, well, was a bit off the cuff. We were unboxing it and seeing the cards afresh for the first time. So I thought it might actually be a great idea now that we have good high resolution images of these cards. Um, just to go through them again, just to have a chat about their possible synergy and uh, meta effectiveness. I will say just before we dive into this, I am disappointed that we did not get this article um, within the sequence of the previous two articles. What well, it was like one a week and then it was well, like four or five weeks until this one or something silly like that. At least it feels like that. It's probably actually more than like uh, two or three. Um, and I just, I don't understand why. I don't understand why FFG, despite the fact that they delayed Wave 4, couldn't just put these articles out. I'm frustrated overall that we don't have an official spoiler season for X-Wing Waves. Um, this is something that Wizards of the Coast with Magic the Gathering have nailed, and it would be so great to see this with X-Wing. If not only when Waves are announced, uh, FFG also announced, oh, and during these two weeks we'll be doing all the spoiler articles, so us content creators know when to make videos on them, so we know when to expect spoilers on them as fans in general. It would be so good for the game. FFG, please improve on this. This is a, uh, a big sore point for me anyway. Anyway, um, having said all of that, yes, I got to unbox all of it early. Click the link up there if you want to see that. So I have all the cards here in front of me. So rather than just read them off the screen, I will just look at them here and talk about them as the image magically appears here through the power of editing. So we're going to take a look at the transport pod pilots first. Uh, first, we have Rose and Finn. Let's start with Finn. A big deal. While you defend and perform an attack, you may add one blank result. Or you may gain one strain token to add a focus result instead. Notice that says strain, not stress. So you can still do that while being stressed, which is handy. I'm not really sure that Finn wants to be taking too many strain tokens, given how fragile his platform's on. Um, especially considering it's improving his dice. I guess it's all about the timing here. So if he's... Uh, copping an attack from an enemy ship and uh, no other enemy ship can shoot him again that round, well, that's fine because he can take the strain token, remove it the next turn through doing a blue maneuver, and that actually works out really well. It's almost as if there's no downside for taking that focus result. Um, in terms of combos with this, I am curious. It's not likely that we're going to be able to take Ray on Finn because Ray's a gunner, and I can't see this little thing having a gunner slot. We also have Rose, which is kind of handy. You can spend those blank results to gain target locks for free, which is handy. Although uh, this platform making use of target locks, there are torpedoes in this pack. Although again, it's probably for the transport, not the escape craft. So I, I don't know. Look, in terms of just a decent value build, I'm looking strictly at Lone Wolf. Um, I think that's something you could put on Finn, and then you still have your crew slots free to do like a Princess Leia build or something like that, where the focus is on the crew. I'm not convinced that using this pilot in such a way just to try and combo with his pilot ability, because frankly, it's still a fragile little craft, two red dice, two green dice. So at the end of the day, what is your combo really achieving? That's the important thing. Okay, let's move over to Rose. Initiative three, while you defend and perform an attack, you may reroll up to one of your results for each other friendly ship in the attack arc uh, while you defend or you perform an attack. That's kind of weird. So if you're flying in formation and your enemy's shooting you if uh, you've got other ships in their arc, which is likely, you get to do re-rolls. The same is true on offense if you have really aggressive ships up in your opponent's face. But again, it's re-rolls and two red and two green. I mean, it's handy. I like the idea of this in like a junkyard kind of build, if the resistance can ever make that work. And honestly, with the two platforms in this pack, I think that is possible uh, because you just get a nice bit of value if this is a cheap enough thing. Again, you just slap on something like heroic on four different platforms, fly them in formation. This is just the kind of incremental advantage that makes those kind of builds work. 
Um, it's been a while since we've seen those kind of things work. It's, it, people were people were experimenting with that kind of build at the start of second edition. It was a huge thing back in first edition. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very curious about it. But look, I've said in previous videos, I don't think Rose is really up to scratch. And I think, honestly, uh, now that we've had this time to reflect on the power level of these cards, I'm not really that convinced with Rose or Finn. But I think they will be okay, again, if they're just focused on a, being a carrier platform. The pilot I'm most interested on this craft is BB-8, which apart from anything else has a Calculate Action which is really, really good because now we have some tangible upside to taking C-3PO on the resistance, which I'll talk a bit more about later in this video. But BB-8 reads, during the system phase, you may perform a red barrel roll or boost. Kind of reminds me of Sabine in the Rebel Faction on the attack shuttle. Indeed, I think it's going to fill a very similar role. Unfortunately, only two red dice, so using it as a really combat efficient platform again feels a bit weird but there's, there's ways to abuse this there are crew options in this pack which helps you out with stress tokens um there's prime thrusters assuming it gets a tech slot like everything else from this era of the film franchise has uh, it could be okay it could be okay again i'm just looking at those dice values and thinking oh this is okay but what are you achieving at the end of the day from all this dodgy flying and arc dodging and flanking and whatever you're just achieving a pretty average attack and and i think ultimately all three of these pilots while they look really really cool um perhaps will just be best with some kind of strong crew option like princess Leia. although i will say bb8 is very tempting on a c3po build and that might push it over the edge in terms of being just good enough to make it into something that does not rely on other things the last pilot we have here is V Marathi, Initiative 1, set up. After placing forces, assign the compromising intel condition to one enemy ship. That reads, during the system phase, if enemy V Marathi is at range 0 to 3, flip your dial face up. And when it says enemy here, it's from the point of view of your opponent's ship. Um, I know that's confusing, but that's how it's been written. While you defend or perform an attack against enemy V Marathi, you cannot spend focus tokens. So kind of doing a bit of a weird Cassian Andor, Intel Agent thing kind of effect where you get to look at your opponent's dial. I like that it's range 0 to 3. I think that is a generous scope to make this work. Also, locking down your dice mods against v -Marati. And again, I just want to say, hey, it's a it's an average platform, so who really cares? But this is very handy if you are running like the Princess Leia build because... This is something that can really help protect itself. And in that regard, um, being able to see your opponent's dial, I guess, is helpful. When does that occur? During the system phase. So yes, you get all the information you need. Uh, the platform has a barrel roll, so perhaps that means you could preemptively arc dodge your opponent. Um, if you've got a very important crew member on Vimarati. Yeah, it could be decent. It could be decent. I'm not blown away by any of these particular pilots, but... They are very curious nonetheless. Let's move over to these transport pilots and have a look at them. First up, we have our Initiative 1 Logistics Division pilot. And we spoke about this before. The thing that's going to make this interesting is if there is a great use in the crew slot or if somehow that Chewbacca build becomes viable, we need a cheap platform to go alongside Chewie to give that any hope at all. Uh, I'm not convinced it's going to be meta viable at all, but this is the kind of thing that's going to help that along. There is no generic pilot with the transport pod, so maybe this is the thing that that build needs. Moving along, we have Nodin Chavdri. Initiative 2, uh, after you coordinate or are coordinated, if you have two or fewer stress tokens, you may perform one action on your action bar as a red action, even if you are stressed. And it says any action on your action bar, so that can still be the jam. Um, it obviously can't be the coordinate. Oh, I suppose it could, because you could be coordinated and then coordinate. It doesn't say that that action has to initially be white. Um, if it's a red action, it remains red. If it's a white action, it becomes red. So there's a decent amount of value here, especially considering this platform has, again, crew options that help you out with the stress. Prime thrusters won't help you out with this particular platform because it doesn't have boosts or barrel rolls, so uh, whatever. Yeah, there's some interesting things you can do with this pilot. I would not be surprised if this was one of the platforms that actually did well meta-wise. It's just one of those great value effects that seems pretty innocuous on the surface, but 
um, just seems to do enough. And of course, with this many options, there's always the chance that something was missed and it just turns out busted. In terms of meta viability, I'm looking at this pilot the most right now anyway. Pamic Nero Good. That's a name. Initiative three, while you have two or fewer stress tokens, you may execute red maneuvers even while stressed. And this is really, really good because we have a crew option that can wholesale remove a whole heap of stress at once, which is quite nice. Um, execute red maneuvers. Doesn't say anything about executing actions, although there is another crew member that can help with that. Again, we'll get onto all of that in a second. Um, but in terms of that ability, it feels like um, trying to increase its combat effectiveness. It has a full stop. I don't hate this, but again, I'm not sure how important that positioning is going to be ultimately when there's probably better options here. Moving over to Initiative 4 with Covenel. While you defend and perform a primary attack, if your reveal maneuver is red, roll one additional die. And I quite like this one a lot. Um, again, we're not really that concerned about combat effectiveness per se on this platform. But being able to roll extra dice, especially on defense, is going to help you when you have a very important crew member. Again, broken record, Leia Organa is the thing to look out for here. And I like this a lot. Um, it's just, it's initiative four, so it might be a bit costly. Traditionally, um, sort of like your pal pace carriers and that genre of thing do seem to favor lower initiatives just to try and get a bit more efficiency on the table, but who knows? Look, this is not an ace platform, so the costing curve against the initiatives of these pilots isn't going to be too steep. Uh, here's hoping anyway. Talk more about that when we actually get some points, but let's have a look at these upgrade cards that come in this pack. And I've got these in a bit of a jumbled order here in front of me, but that doesn't matter because, hey look, on top we have angle deflectors, and oh boy, this has been the topic of conversation um, now in several videos of mine. And uh, in the comment section, on social media, whatever, this card has got a lot of people um, feeling meh, terrified, brewing, saying it's going to break the game, say it's going to have no kind of effect at all. I actually got the comment in the last video that um, it's even if it costs zero points, it won't be meta viable. And I completely disagree with that. Um, I think just tacking on reinforce to all small ships that have at least one shield uh, yeah, no, no, we don't want that in the game. Not at least in any kind of sort of broadly adopted super efficient capacity. There has to be some kind of hard limiter on this. The conversation we were talking about recently was on Darth Vader because Darth Vader can just poop out as many actions as he likes. And a lot of people respond to that, well, hang on, uh, Vader can just tank a lot of hits and sort of just give you a lot of evade results. So, you know, you're not likely to have more than one hit result anyway. The reason I'm talking about this is because, yes, there are those times where your green dice wholesale betray you. And this is the kind of effect that is going to be so welcome on ships that don't want to get one-shotted. Um, uh, honestly, guys, I, I think it would be crazy to make this zero points. I think that's very, very dangerous, especially when we have uh, aces, when we have um, tire foes with fanatical flying around. That would just be too efficient and too good. Apart from anything else, it would force um, First Order players, uh, amongst other players, to buy a lot of resistance transports, which is not fair. FFG, print this in more packs, please, soon, wave five, I'm watching out for that. Disappointed this wasn't in the N1 Starfighter pack, I think that was a big missed opportunity by FFG. They really have to get on top of printing these generic cards as often as possible. Yes, we need that expansion slash pilot pack, we need information on that soon FFG because it's becoming more and more important with every wave. Okay, next up, let's have a chat about C-3PO, who was revealed and released in Wave 2, so you can pick him up in the conversion kit for the Resistance. And up until now, he's not had a lot of great options because you need other pilots with the Calculate action on their bar. In other words, droids or somebody carrying a droid. But now, thanks to this pack, we have a few options. We have that BB-8 pilot, which I was talking about before, but we also have these two crew members. We have PZ4CO and GA97. And just in terms of all of these effects, what this allows C3PO to do is coordinate ships beyond range two if they have that calculate action. This feels like a very good ability for the resistance to have because they are all about fancy flying and 
perhaps not so much about formation. Yeah, I know I was talking about junkyard builds before, but, but honestly, I don't know if it's quite there yet. Plus, the BB-8. Um, again, I was talking about C-3PO builds before. This pilot is interesting because it looks like it can just eke out enough value to see meta play. Alongside C-3PO, you can get like a little sort of mini swarm build going along. It just needs all the right pieces to fall into place. I mean, there's a conversation around what uh, platform C-3PO needs to go on. Does it go on like a Falcon or a bomber? Do we get a transport alongside this group? I'm not sure, but I'm very curious. In terms of these new crew cards, uh, PC-4CO is an interesting option. At the end of the activation phase, you may choose one friendly ship at range 1 to 2. If you do, transfer one Calculate token to that ship. If the reveal maneuver is blue, you may transfer one Focus token instead. Um, so you don't want to slap this on a droid. I mean, you're not going to anyway, because you want to be able to put it on someone that can take focus tokens, which is interesting. If you put him on a transport, uh, that means you can pass focus tokens off from something that's staying in the back that's not getting shot and maybe carrying another crew member or maybe just being there for value. Again, this is all about value. You might just have a few transports, a uh, couple of the transport pods, all with these calculate actions. Um, this kind of weird mini swarm could be an interesting kind of effect to have on the resistance and I don't hate this. This is really high value. This is something that might be interesting on like a Falcon plus one or plus two build like ace kind of thing. Um, the Falcon's in a bit of an awkward spot right now in terms of its meta viability. It's a big ship. It takes up a lot of the list and not that efficient, especially considering there's also the Rebel Falcon, which is just firing on all cylinders right now. In terms of the other droid, we have GA-97, and I've explained this so many times. I'm just going to say it now. Uh, you basically set a timer at the start of the game, and when that timer goes off, you launch another ship onto the playfield. Um, yeah, I think this can be a bit of a trap, because you have to bear in mind, while you have another ship in reserve, your opponent has fewer ships shooting them. They have fewer targets. It makes it easier for your opponent. You really have to try and leverage that as best you can. The main conversation around this is on Poe Dameron right now, and I completely agree. I think he's absolutely the best option for this. Being able to sneakily launch him uh, somewhere weird and flank out your opponent, and flank your opponent or maybe just joust with a ship that they really didn't want to joust with, feels like a really, really strong option. Now, whether this goes alongside the kind of C-3PO all-in build, I'm not so sure. But I'm not so unsure either. I mean, it feels like this build is going to be efficient enough to fit on some aces, so it could be good. I do feel like this build does want to fly in formation, though, so maybe you'd rather just get like four or five ships and fly them in a tight-knit cluster and not worry about any kind of tricky tricks like that. So, yeah, I, I know. I'm on the fence with this one. I'm not quite sure where it lives in terms of its application, but a really cool effect nonetheless. Just wish it wasn't so complicated. Okay, we got a bunch of human crew members. Let's talk about a bunch of crew that like to play around with stress. We have Billy Lord and Caden Connix, Cora Seller and Lama Darcy. Caden Connix plays a kind of Juno Eclipse role in that you can increase the speed of your maneuvers in exchange for increasing its difficulty as well. We've spoken about this before, kind of a fun interaction on the Falcon. You can change an S loop to a 4 forward if you really want to do that. Um, bear in mind, you can change anything to a red maneuver. That's not an issue. It just stays red. It's written in the rules that you cannot increase the difficulty of red maneuvers. They don't like become uh, super red or strainy or forcing anything like that. Um, but this is a really, really decent effect. I'm just curious about what kind of platform it can go on apart from the Falcon. I'm not sure if the Star Fortress really wants this kind of thing. I'm not really sure if the transport really wants this kind of thing. I mean, this is the kind of thing that would just be fantastic on an ace, but of course, it's a crew member, so can't really do that. Although, that's pretty common of most crew to have effects like this that are just busted on those kind of platforms. Lama Darcy. Okay. While you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can perform reinforce, coordinate, and jam actions even while stressed. While you perform a white reinforce, coordinate, or jam action if you're stressed, treat the action as red. So the cool thing on this particular platform is you have access to those actions as red actions. 
And yeah, you can put on angle deflectors if you really want to. It's going to be red with this crew if you're already stressed. I don't know how much value. I think that's really sort of pushing that card at that stage. But the fact of the matter is, um, there is no additional downside if those actions happen to already be red. Um, I really like this alongside coordinate. Full stop coordinate seems decent um, alongside jam as well. And the fact that the transport has both, that is a lot of versatility. Basically, in the instance that your opponent just flies directly at you, you can full stop and jam them. Or you can fly aggressively at your own ships, not worrying about stripping stress, and then you can just coordinate them, which is just really, really good. Feels like this is going to see pretty consistent value. The fact that it works in both of those not implausible situations seems just really, really good. And actually, the more I think about this card, the more I like it. It's going to depend on the points, obviously. It's the kind of card that can be really powerful if cheap enough. Um, but pretty decent overall. I'm expecting it to be a pretty modest value, like around 4 or 5, and I think that's pretty decent. I think that's going to make it see play. And the last one we have here, Coracella. After you fully execute a blue maneuver, you can remove all stress tokens, which seems really, really great because these platforms alongside the Falcon all have a lot of ways to stress themselves out. And a lot of different cards that say, as long as you don't have you know, two or more, you can do whatever you like. You can rotate your arc, you can do your reinforce actions, you can jam and coordinate um, with a Raise Millennium Falcon and Lorna Darcy as well. So having a panic button to just remove all those stress tokens feels pretty good. It feels really, really good. It feels like just the kind of card that the faction wants. Um, definitely comboing with a lot of things that are going on. Um, I would not play this fairly. Um, you need some kind of combo to make this worth it. Um, just sort of going, oh, I might accidentally stress myself out a couple of times. You definitely need, like, Raise Millennium Falcon or Lorna Darcy to really push the power level of this card. But that's okay. It feels really, really decent. Okay, on to Admiral Holdo. Amelin Holdo. Before you engage, you may choose another friendly ship at range 1 to 2. You may transfer to that ship one token of a type that ship does not have. That ship may transfer one token to you of a type it does not have. Which is really, really good. Now we spoke about this before, I don't really have a lot to add here. Just remember this does not work with force. It can pull strain, stress, disarm tokens if you have a black one doing your slams. Um, off your friendly ships and put it onto your transport. That feels really, really powerful. In the process, you're giving them a focus. Uh, maybe an evade if it has the right platform. You can give them a reinforce. Again, angled deflectors, guys. It can do sneaky things like this. And yes, Holdo seems fantastic. There's not really a lot to talk about here. Um, this feels like a great ace support card. I don't know if like the Falcon Plus ace build really wants this because this is really fighting for its spot on that build. But maybe a transport or two alongside like your Poe Dameron, your Initiative 5, A-Wings and X-Wings. Yeah, I can see this having a lot of potential. Um, hopefully it's not costed through the roof, but even if it is expensive, I can see this seeing some decent amount of play. And yes, I know FFG um, missed out on the joke meme option of going, you can sacrifice this ship to destroy a large ship in a neighboring game in your LGS of someone playing Armada. I know they missed the opportunity to do that, but uh, no, not happening. It's really cool nonetheless, um, a really cool sort of commander leader card. We're seeing a few more of those creep into the game and I dig that. And yes, of course, Leia or Ghana, really, 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 really cool. Um, yeah, me and Justin were pretty hyped when we saw this for the first time. Two crew, resistance. After a friendly ship reveals its dial, you may spend a force. If you do, the chosen ship reduces the difficulty of that maneuver. Plus you get a force token, plus you get a purple coordinate. That means you have three different things to spend your force tokens on. If you put her on Ray in the Falcon, that means that you have three force tokens, three great options for those force tokens. And while yes, you can only coordinate once a turn, you can use Leia Organa multiple times a turn. So potentially if that can go alongside a couple of A-Wings, I think sort of Poe plus an A-Wing might be pushing it, but yeah, really, really interested in that kind of build. Plus, yes, Leia can just be played fairly on a resistant transport, which I think, honestly, in terms of meta viability, is more likely. Reducing the difficulty of your friendly ship's dials is just so, so potent, especially when you have things uh, like Poe Dameron, who has pushed the limits built into him. He could be stressed. You could make his white maneuver blue. Then he can do his pilot ability two times in a row, which is just really, really good off any white maneuver. 
Um, it just seems really, really powerful. I'm, I, personally, I'm pushing this to work on Ray. I really want to make that work. I really want to use Leia with multiple Force tokens if I can. It's just about making that particular build first. I think I've got to buy myself some more A-Wings anyway. But yeah, in any case, I'd be very, very surprised if there wasn't some pretty heavy adoption early on. A lot of experimentation on this. Um, despite the points cost, look, if it's efficient enough, obviously, yes, this kind of effect is just too powerful not to see meta play if it is cheap enough. Um, I know FFG have been a bit harsh with their costing of some of these Force users, but I think they're being a bit more forgiving now that they've realized how ineffective some large base ships are. So, yeah, Leia, really, really excited to play with this card. And look, this whole pack overall is just awesome. I just really wish this article came out a few weeks ago. I think it's just criminal that it didn't. Um, even with the delay, I'm just going to keep banging on this drum. FFG, this article should have come out with the other ones. It should have been on a tight schedule. There needs to be some consistency in the way this information is propagated out to us. And yeah, just in terms of scheduling, the screws really need to be tightened because the game feels fantastic right now. The way second edition has come along, it's just things like this that needs a bit of addressing. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon so you can be notified of any future videos. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Reddit, please consider supporting my Patreon as well. The number one thing which is helping support this channel right now, I cannot thank my existing patrons enough, you guys are all flippin' awesome. I'll catch you in the next video.